Welcome back, treasures. And if you're new here, thanks for joining me today. I'm working on some altar items. First, I'm going to be upcycling this brass bowl into a nice little altar bowl. I stored my jewelry in here, but you could use this as an offering bowl or to put some crystals in or anything you want to display. I have this brass bowl that I got from a thrift store many, many years ago. And I'm just going to remove some of this tarnish and shine it up a little bit with some Barkeeper's Friend. This is a liquid that you can use to clean various different metals and other surfaces um, like ceramic. I can use this to clean my sink sometimes or a toilet. But today we're using it for a brass altar bowl. And while this did work and take the tarnish off, it required an extreme amount of elbow grease as well. I will likely never do this again, but I really like the way it turned out, even though after all of the scrubbing I did, I was still not able to get it out of the little divots from this kind of hammered effect that runs down the middle of the bowl. If you're new here, be a treasure and hit that subscribe button below so you can stay up to date on all of these crafting adventures. This is how it turned out after it's all completely cleaned and I really like the finish on this now. I want to line the inside of this with that fuzzy fabric and I have this fabric tape so that I'm not going to use glue and have to hold it for a while or clamp it or anything. But this tape is a little bit wide, so I'm going to use this just box knife to score down the center to create two different strips of tape instead of one strip of tape. Then I'm just going to take one side of this extremely double-sided sticky fabric tape and put it right where the edge starts to roll on that kind of top lip, but still where it's flat on the inside of the bowl. So not completely on the top of the, that little lip there, but just where that bowl meets it. And I want to stuff it with some padding so that it's kind of cushioned in there. I was afraid that the padding would move around too much, so I used this glue to spray the inside of the bowl and then put the batting in. And then I thought that the batting would still move around, so I sprayed over the batting again before I laid my cloth fabric down into the bowl. Now I'm going to cut around it just so I can get some of this excess off. Yes, I could have cut a smaller piece originally, but I wasn't really measuring or anything. This is just how crafting goes sometimes, okay? So I'm going to remove the excess and then fold it under to then tape it to the bowl. So I'll take off that other piece of kind of protectant from the tape and just make kind of little ripples and tuck this fabric into itself as I'm securing it to the bowl. And this is how it turned out. I absolutely love it. It is so soft and shiny as well. It is going to look fantastic on my altar no matter what I put inside. But for now, let's move on to project number two. My mom gifted me this box. And this box has some handles on the front and some fake kind of buckles and the top lifts up. And then the bottom kind of handle is a drawer. 
but I hate this color that's on the inside. I'm not in love with the way the outside looks, but I'm not going to tackle that today because I really want to get this box done and in use. So I'm going to line the inside with fabric and kind of paint this top area. But first I have to take off the lid and then I just put some tape around it so I wouldn't paint over this kind of faux wood finish paint. I started out with red, just a bright red. I wanted to try to match the fabric color. I knew this red wouldn't do it, but I wanted a red color instead of that yellow as the base. Then I put on a wine which I hoped actually was going to match fairly well. It didn't. <laughs> but I painted that same wine color as a base over the drawer as well. I wanted to change all of the outside of the drawer that was in this yellowy color because I really did it not like that color. It went with the wood grain just fine, but it does not go with the fabric that I am placing into it, so it had to go. Ultimately, I ended up mixing a red and a purple together to make a hue that's close enough. So that's what you see now on the lid is this reddish purple. Then I took some black and I watered it down because I wanted the edges to kind of look like they were old, very aged, um, almost a moldy, but not really a mold. So just to look like they've been weathered and maybe not taken care of too well. Um, and so this kind of did the effect. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it turned out okay. It's acceptable. I do like it in the end. So I just take this watery black and I put it all around the outside of this reddish base and I kind of fade it in um, in an upward feathered dry brush motion so that it kind of streaks out into the middle. Then I cut a triquerta out on my Cricut machine. However, when I went to weed it, I weeded it out backwards from what I actually needed, and that's just my bad. It was a mistake. I was tired, and I realized after I'd started, but then I just decided to go with it. I could have cut it again, but I didn't want to waste more material, so instead, I'm just going to do a reverse effect to make that stand out. So I got the stencil on really well and then I painted that same black effect around all of the edges. Now I didn't water down this black, I left it at a, as a full force black, but I did that kind of feathering out technique so some of that red would still show. And I did it all around the inside and then all around the outside edge as well because I wanted to give definition to where the image would be from where the stencil is right now. So then I removed the stencil, so satisfying. And it looks pretty good, but because I did this reverse from what I originally thought I was going to do, I needed to go back and kind of repaint some of those lines to get rid of that original kind of black fading. And so I just mixed some more of that red purple paint and then painted along the inside of my um, design here to give it that crisp, clean look and edge. Then we come to the fabric. I went ahead and painted the inside of the drawer area and then put an enamel on it as well as the outside of the drawer so it wouldn't stick or rub off any of that yellow paint onto my freshly painted um, drawer and I um, painted the corners of all of the drawer and um, kind of top area as well so that if I don't get my lines right on this fabric <laughs> that you won't see it as much. I wanted to start with clean edges on the fabric so I just cut off clean edge for nice perfect measurements and then I measured the inside portion of the drawer only and cut out a piece for the base and then four pieces for the sides.
but before I could put this on, I wanted to take the handle off because the fabric is actually going to come up to the top of that. And I didn't wanna go over the screws, so I will put all of the fabric in, let it dry, and then come back and screw the handles back on. I just used Mod Podge for this, and if I put an ample amount, it should be fine. And I used my fingers and actually this paint mixing tool to smush it down so it gets nice and flat on that wood surface and stays secure while it dries. So I'm going to do this around all four edges of the drawer and then I'm going to put the base down. And this gives me a chance to make sure if any of my measurements were off at all, I can make slight adjustments and make a cut, just like this corner right here is a little bit long. So I'm just going to snip it off so I don't have an overlapping fabric piece at that corner edge. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and give this video a like so I know that you want to see more stuff like this. And if you have an idea on a future video that you'd like me to do, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. After all the fabric's been placed and it's completely dry, then I use an X-Acto knife to punch the holes through where the screws will go so that as I screw the screws in, they won't try to pull any of the fabric. So just make some slits, put the screws back in to get the handles secure. Then I need to put the hinges back on so that I can put the top piece back on. I probably should have put the hinges on the lid and then put them on to the base, but Hindsight. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have today. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, treasures, keep crafting.